Hi everyone and welcome to the second video of the new series um, of tutorials for Biba. If you haven't watched the first video, then it might be difficult to follow the contents of this video, so I strongly recommend you to watch the first video and then um, continue here. Uh, the previous video we were able to create a um, little box with dovetail joints and we also uh, successfully unfold this box and prepare it for production. In this video we're going to make a cap for our box and as you can see the cap is done um, with a little opening so you can open it and also um, if I can show you some details of this cap here All right, so the cap is done uh, also with a little nice detail here that it can engage with the uh, with the opening of the box. It's basically a lap joint, and the lap joint is um, done obviously all over the cap. So let's see how we can do this. So now I'm going to just open the file that we uh, finished with. Okay, so this is the file um, we produced last tutorial, and and this was the geometry that we use as a sketch. So um, I'm gonna just hide all the other things that we don't need, and now let's focus on this. So the only difference now is that we have a cap here, which is again a simple. Um, rectangular surface which is flat and this has got some opening there with a round corner so um, just like previous time we have to take that uh, sketch and create a planar poly surface from it but there's one little point here that uh, we can actually provide a list of b-ribs so uh, you don't have to always join B reps and then feed it as a single B rep into the uh, PPS component. So uh, what that means is that you can actually select multiple B reps simply like that, and then the PPS uh, component will take care of it and then joins everything together. So as you can see now, um, the assembly is already uh, created successfully. And if I'm uh, going to hide my sketch, I can see that I have um, created a box with a cap, but now I do have dovetails all around, and that's not what I want. And the reason for this is that we only introduced one joint type here, which was dovetail, so obviously this will be populated on uh, on all the edges of our sketch. So there has to be a way to distinguish between the edges on the top of the box and the rest of the edges that we want to be uh, we want to treat it as a dovetail joint. Um, and there are actually three different ways to do this. I'm going to start with the very simple one. And that is actually called edge labeling, which means that you're going to label each edges in your sketch, and then you use that label um, to assign a different joint type. So to do that, we're going to need a component from Biba, which is called um, edge labeling, and that is under um, PPS tools here, and that's here, up there. So. Now, what this component does is actually doesn't produce any output. It just shows the labels of the edges on the sketch. So that means that edges are already labeled by the PPS polygons. So I will just connect my sketch here. And I should already see um, some labels. They're probably too tiny, so you can, 
you can see them. So, so I'm going to set the size to something like 25 millimeter. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's much better. As you can see, the old edges got labels, and what we're actually interested in is these edges uh, from zero to three. So, yeah, pretty cool. We only need to to assign a different joint type to these four edges. So let's see how we can do that. If you look at any joint type component, um, you have an uh, integer input, you, uh, it's called edges, and that's actually where the label goes. So if I want to have a lap joint for these four edges, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a lap joint. and I'm going to create a panel. Oh, you, there are many ways to do that. I, I just like it uh, to do it with the panel. So we go with the multi data and then we just enter our edge indexes here. Two and three. So um, let's go here and assign it to the edges. And we just leave the parameters as default. And now we have to connect to connect the edges the, or add those joint types also into um, the joint type parameter or input of the assembly. One thing is very important that there has to be always a single input. So you have to make sure what you put there is always um, a flattened list of uh, or a single list. So. So just to not confuse ourselves, we just merge these joint types beforehand into here, a merge component, and then flatten the result, and then plug it into the joint type. What you could also possibly do, you just flatten on the input that could that is also will work. I mean, but I like it more explicit. So um, now I got something here, and I can see that it's it's working. Um, although there is a difference, let me just bake them so you can see them better. So we're going to just bake it here and then close. So I I just made the cap with the lap joints on over the three edges. But then the other edge is actually kind of flipped. So the the way the edges are treated with a lap joint is exactly the way I want it on the three sides, but on one side is actually the other way around. So this groove um supposed to be up here. And this has to do with the way the 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 faces come together uh, around the edges. So there's always um, two possibility in this case, and that is like which face has to be extended over. Like in this case, the top face is extended and the bottom face is um, trimmed. <laughs> so what happened here the first face, which was uh, extended, was the side, and then the top face ended up being the second face, and that was uh, the reason it is trimmed. So um, there has to be a way to kind of flip this and get the, the right uh, configuration that we need. And that's actually available to you in the join, but then you have to um, let me just delete the, what we pick, but then you have to actually distinguish between the the edge number one and the other edges. So that means you're going to have actually another lap joint component which only takes the input uh, the edge one. So let's do that. We're just going to copy this one more time. I'm going to take the one from here out. And then I'm going to put it here. So as you can see now, the edge one is actually 
changed back to dovetail and the reason is when you are not providing indices or the labels for a edge type or for a joint type component then that component will actually take precedence or becomes a default joint type for the assembly so since i don't have any labels here this joint type which happens to be a dovetail joint will be default joint so all the joints will be considered as a dovetail joints unless you explicitly um, um, define the the type of that joint by adding a, a label to it so um, I hope that's clear now so we're going to just add number one here and we will put that into our joint type list so we're going to get back our lab joint but we didn't do much here because still we have the same problem as before and to solve that problem we will look at the settings of the lab joint but most of joints have this general setting configuration and the configuration has to do with how the the order of the faces around the joint could uh, change the, the the joint geometry and that is what exactly I explained which face comes first or which one comes second so in this type of joint where you have two faces which we call it manifold joint and it's important you all remember that because we're going to deal with manifold and non-manifold edges so in the case of a manifold edges it's usually two uh, configuration so if the zero doesn't work for you you just click on this little arrow here and then try to see if one works and it should because there's only two possibility for the lap joint and I can see already I have created uh, the lap joint the way I want it on this edge and the last thing I probably wanted to um, change is the the amount where I um, cut from the the top part in order to uh, create my lap joint and that is called depth in the lap joint a depth parameter that controls how deep is the groove in the lap joint so and this depth is basically in a ratio it's not in a it's not a length and that means if it's uh, 0.25 which is the default value it basically cuts 25% of the thickness of the material to create the groove so if I want to go half through then I have to make that half or 0.5 so let's see what happens if we do that half so I'm gonna set both of them because it has to be um, they have to be all the same so now I actually created a lab joint which cuts half of the a thickness of um, the joint we can quickly bake them to see how it looks like now so if I open that up so yeah now we can see I have basically cut half of the um, thickness of the material and I have a very clean nice lap joint okay that's for this um, tutorial today so we'll learn how to use um, different joint type in one assembly and um, how to label the edges and how to use those labels to define different joint types but there's one problem with the with this approach and that is when you change something in your sketch you probably don't get the same labels it could vary so that means every time that you um, change the geometry especially when you change the topology of this input you possibly have to reassign those uh, indices so there's no guarantee that they would stay the same um, and that's why we have a different way of dealing with this problem and I'm going to talk about it in the next videos but that was the simplest way possible and it's good when you want to do something very quick and you you're sure that your input won't uh, change in terms of topology okay thanks for watching and we'll see you next time